Falk. How do you feel mentally considering your results on clay this year? Uh, mentally for the tournament here? Yes. Okay. Um, well, low expectations and high hopes. Hi, Novak. Um, maybe a similar question, but in general this year, you have not played as much as you usually would or had as much success as you're used to by this point in the season. Do either of those things affect you coming into this tournament? And you sort of touched on this just now, but perhaps could elaborate a little on it. Normally, you think of yourself, it seems like, as somebody who's a favorite to win any tournament you enter. Do you feel that way coming back here this time? Well, I would say that I know that what I'm capable of, and particularly the Grand Slams, I um, normally play the best tennis, and at least I aim always to play the best tennis, and I was for most of my career uh, able to do that. So that's the goal. Um, and I've been saying, you know, for quite a while that in terms of clay, I want to peak um, here in, in Paris, in Roland Garros. And <clears throat> last year I had an amazing year, uh, particularly uh, here in Roland Garros. And hopefully I can, yeah, have a great tournament. Uh, of course, it does affect me, the, you know, the, the, the five, months that I had so far in a year that haven't been great in terms of my tennis. Um, and that's why I have, you know, um, a kind of an approach that uh, is focused on a daily basis, more trying to build the form and momentum so that I can have a better chance to reach further in the, in the tournament. <clears throat> Hey, Novak. Um, so what have you drawn on uh, during these five months in terms of your experiences? You've experienced just about everything in your career, ups and downs. And are there other periods that you've thought about and sort of where you found your way out of holes uh, that have come to mind and have, you know, could potentially provide a road upwards this time? Uh, I wouldn't call them holes. They're rather bumps on the road. Um, you know, I've always looked ahead, uh, what is the next challenge and what it takes for me to be better than I was last week. So that's the kind of a mindset that I keep nurturing and keep having. So it, it probably won't stop until I stop playing professional tennis. I mean, that's the only way I know how to, you know, conduct myself as a professional tennis player and also compete at the highest level. Uh, as I previously answered, I know what my qualities are. I know what I'm capable of. And if I, you know, have the right conditions in terms of the way I feel physically, mentally, you know, game wise. Um, and then, of course, you need some luck as well. And on, on a given day when you're playing matches against you know, the best players in the world that things come together and you win a slam. Um, I've, I've experienced that 24 times in my career. So I, I and many other finals and semifinals. So I, I, I know exactly what I need to do in Grand Slams uh, environment or Grand Slam um, competition, so to say. It's, it's, a, it's a whole different uh, type of tournament uh, and a feel for for the tournament than than any any other uh, really uh, tournaments that we have in in the calendar. So um, so yeah, that's 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 kind of it. No, Novak, you have spoken about how important resilience has been in your career. Um, can you just mention the one or two points in your career where you really felt you were the most resilient, and what? Does that give you particular satisfaction and, and what do you need to be so resilient? Um, I mean, resilience is definitely uh, always very much needed uh, in life in general for anybody. Um, you know, life uh, throws different challenges at you. I mean, 
in, in, in this case, as a professional tennis player, you have to kind of be more <laughs> accustomed to uh, losses than wins. Um, and, you know, if you have a season or two or three or four, whatever, in your career where you're your winning percentage of the tournaments that you play is more than 50%, you're lucky. Because <laughs> most of the tournaments you play, percentage-wise, you're lower than 50% of winning in a year. So uh, that, that's what you have to accept and adapt to, you know, the feeling of failing or losing uh, most of the times, uh, the, the, you know, most of the tournaments where you participate in a year and then you have to face injuries and, uh, you know, et cetera, in, in, in a career that is long. I mean, in, in, in this instance of my career, I mean, I don't know, one major injury, thankfully I didn't have too many major injuries, but one that I had was in <clears throat> 2000 and kind of started in 2016, but then carried on to 17, uh, where I took six months off and then in early 18, I, I had surgery of my elbow, and that has alternated my biomechanics for the serve, my technique. I had to completely readjust my game, um, and I dropped the rankings uh, to um, out of to top 20. So then I had to build the rankings, um, and you know, kind of start over again. So uh, I've had several of these particular situations in my career where I had to. Um, kind of uh, find a fresh start, so to say, and um, and and I was managing to do it. You know, in some instances earlier, in some instances a bit later, uh, but you know, I, I was managing to to find uh, the right game, the right mindset, and um, yes. Yeah, so, so I'll try to use that kind of particular experiences that I had. I mean, when it comes to experience, I've, I think I have quite quite a lot of experience. You know, I'm playing on the tour and experienced really, as you said, uh, you know, highs and lows and ups and downs and various things. So I, I'll try to use that for in a positive way, in a positive fashion for this tournament and the rest of the season. Uh, hey, Novak. No, 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 it was Catherine. Catherine. <clears throat> Catherine. Thank you. Hi, Novak. Um, just on the, the low expectations, high hopes things, how low are we talking? And when was the last time those expectations were this low going into a, a major? Uh, it's <laughs> tough to talk about. It's very subjective. And, I, 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 you know, I almost feel a bit embarrassed to say, you know, what my uh, expectations are. You know, uh, anything but a, a title for me is not satisfactory, you know. So it always has been like that. Uh, and I know for... <laughs> You know, it might sound uh, arrogant to a lot of people, but I think I have the career that backs it up. And in, in, in a way, me playing uh, still at this highest level, one of the major reasons is trying to, you know, write more history of the sport and, and, and win the biggest titles um, that, you know, Paris is definitely one of them. So uh, that's why my hopes and goals are always the same. Uh, but I have to lower the expectations, and, and when I say that, I mean, uh, you know, maybe not thinking too much ahead in advance um, in terms of the tournament and who I might face in the later rounds, but really taking it day by day, step by step, and really building my game because, you know, that's what I have been struggling with, you know, not really playing on a consistently good level. So um, I obviously need that in order to have uh, any chance to to uh, go to the to the final match. Two more, Simon and Carol. Hi, Deva. Um Will you be watching Nadal's Ferev tomorrow? And what what do you expect from that match? Well, yes. I mean, if if I don't have anything smarter to do at that point, I'll definitely watch. Uh, I don't know. Are they playing night session, day session? Well, that 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 will make it a bit more difficult for me because I have obligations during the day, but I will uh, try to catch uh, as much as I can from that match. I think everyone <laughs> will want to see what, what will happen. Last one, Carol. Carol. Serbian after, yes. Hi, Novak. Just wondering how you feel physically, because you were struggling in Geneva, and it seems this year it's been a bit up and down. Have you 
point out a reason why you've been struggling to find your, your peak because you're used to find it usually pretty much at this period? Yeah. Well, it's, it's uh, you know, various things that were happening in the, in the last couple of months, but I don't want to get into it. Uh, hope you understand that. I just um, you know, don't want to <laughs> open the Pandora box and talk about things. Uh, just really try to focus myself on what needs to be done, what has happened, happened, um, and it's in the past. It's, you know, uh, something that uh, I can't affect uh, anymore, but I can um, learn to kind of rectify certain things and um, write the, the, the certain things that are wrong and, and really not serving the purpose of my highest performance level. So, um, so that, that's what we've been working on as a team, and hopefully will give us good results here.